Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. This is going to be part two of servicing this Sherwood S7200. In the previous video you may have seen that we identified the disabling failures of a bad ground strap on the input selector switch and we uh, chemically treated most of the switches and controls and then after it was on a while we discovered a uh, flutter of noise in the right channel that seems to be vibration sensitive. And we tracked it down to this driver board here on the right channel. So what we're going to do is go over it and see if there are any obvious loose connections, resolder the board, and then uh, hook it up and see what happens from there. So the first thing to do is uh, get it on its top and so we can see the bottom boards. Okay, so here's the underside and this would be the targeted board. Now, just at first glance, let's see if we can get the camera to focus and maybe kill some extra light. Let the uh, camera exposure do its job. And let's just take a look around here. We can see right off the bat there's some crystallization in that connection there in the center of your screen. And a little bit of oxidation on the others. Again, that lead there behind the capacitor in the center of your screen there. If it will focus. There we go. That's got some oxidation on it. That's the darker areas you see there. Uh, crystallizing and oxidation of the solder will cause poor connections. And we're just going to go around the boards here, see if we can get it to focus again. There we go. Those ones back there aren't so great. So really, just as kind of a preemptive strike, I'm probably going to end up resoldering both boards. Uh, I'm going to guess that the other one isn't too far behind. You see all these little oscillation snubber capacitors here. Maybe they had problems with that. It's the same in both channels. If we go over to the left side, this one doesn't appear to have as bad oxidation as the other, but it's not great. So, really what we need to do is just get the soldering iron out and go crazy on these boards. And we'll see if that generates any improvement for our scenario. Because it seemed to be very vibration sensitive. So let me get the camera mounted up and then uh, we'll grab the soldering iron and go from there. Okay, hopefully you guys can see okay. I know this isn't the greatest angle to work from. But we're just going to go crazy on these things. And we're going to resolder all of these connections here. Because a lot of them are oxidized and that's not good. We want to have good solid connections. Especially in areas where uh, current and voltage are very sensitive to changes. Uh, particularly in the class 8 amplifier stage would be the, the biggest culprit for noise. And as I've always said, you want to have a really hot iron, uh, preferably a 50 watt or better. I'm using a good old Hakko 970, or 907 I believe it is, uh, which has been good to me for the last decade or more. I find it interesting, these little factory jumpers here, the work is too clean to have been done by just Joe Schmo. So I wonder what they did that for, or maybe they would just use this board for other machines. This is the boring part. But once we get this straightened out, we'll fire it up and see if that makes any difference. Sometimes you can't really see the oxidation in the naked eye. Uh, sometimes it actually exists below the solder pad and the lead is losing contact. But you can't see it until you resolder it. And I've also had instances where parts um, have a failure internally where the lead has a failure connecting to the uh, silicon wafer 
inside of like a, let's say an SDK device and you can tap on the SDK and it'll generate all sorts of scary transients in the amplifier and you'll think it's a bad connection on the board when in actuality it's the lead attaching to the uh, wafer inside of the SDK or something on the board of the SDK so it's interesting you see a lot of weird stuff in this field and it always keeps me busy Let's see if we can get this wire out of the way we're almost done with this board and I'm not going to do both boards on camera because that would be boring and in fact if you guys want to fast forward through this part you're more than welcome to there's really nothing to see here except me soldering a bunch of stuff after we're done with this I'll hook it up see if that made any improvement if it did then I'll do the other board as a preemptive strike and then we'll get the front panel off and focus on the lamps uh, I'm also going to do these giant posts back here, which connect to the output transistors. They look okay, but it's not going to hurt anything to do them while I'm at it. Make sure you don't make any solder bridges while you're doing this. I have done that before. Sorry for jerking the camera there, I keep bumping it. And then there are last two down here. Okay. So we resoldered that board. Let's hook it back up and see if the vibration sensitivity has gone away. Okay, so I got everything hooked up here. Let's go to two channels so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm on auxiliary one. This would be speakers A. Okay. So we've come up here. That volume control is still a little noisy. Well, the vibration sensitivity has gone away at least. Now if we turn the sensitivity way up and turn this down, we've got a little bit of power supply bobble there. Doesn't really surprise me, it's not a stellar power supply. This is a pretty basic machine. But the noise is gone. I can wrap on the boards and up. Oh. And let's see. So there is noise there, but it doesn't appear to be vibration related. It's coming and going. Now, <clears throat> one thing we can do is, let's see here. It's still pissed off about something. Yeah, let's go in here. Where's the input side? There we go. That's your input right there. Let's get a clip lead and short the input to ground. And see if that cuts our noise problem. This will tell us whether the noise is in the preamp or not. <clears throat> now you can still see the power supply bobble in the left channel that I did not short to ground, but the right one is nice and quiet. Yeah, that's nice and quiet. There's no more bobble there. But when I disconnect it, the bobble comes back. Let's see if it happens to be RF pickup. 
because my cell phone does emanate RF which would disturb some machines and it's not doing it now we're gonna keep an eye on that but anyway the next thing I want to do now that I've got it so that it's mostly stable uh, we'll resolder the other board and I want to check some of these Panasonic capacitors which have a uh, a fairly high failure rate in these machines and that's simply done with an ESR meter so uh, what let's do now I'm gonna uh, resolder the board and then uh, show you about checking capacitors and things and we'll go from there. alright so I've got my capacitors on the board marked and you see the little black stripes there that's where I identify them as uh, being present and there's a third one over here this big guy next to the black wire yep I marked that one too and so then what we do is is we get our trusty little ESR meter and I happen to like this one from Independence that's old the new ones after the company was bought are garbage but if you can find an old one with all the yellow writing on it they're very good instruments and very accurate so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to measure these purple Panasonic things it's not going to focus there we go that measures okay let's do the one on the other channel sorry if I'm shaking the camera here that one tests okay let's do the input capacitor that tests okay let's do the one on the other channel not as good okay and then let's do these other ones here alright that one's good alright so the one that tested poorly was this little guy here this is your input buffer capacitor because the uh, although the amplifier is full DC uh, the pre the preamp is single ended so that's a 33 microfarad at 16 volt uh, that's fairly high I'm surprised that the oh no that's not your input buffer the input buffer is the little tantalum guy there C601 that's let's check those two old tantalums go bad too and just to make this really quick uh, I'm just gonna pause momentarily and check them both alright so both of the tantalums checked out here and they were both symmetrical reading so that tells me that they both aged about the same and they're they're still good they test about a three and a half on the ESR meter and a brand new one tests about a three so I'm not gonna worry about those this guy tested poorly this 33 microfarad I'm just going to replace them in pairs so we'll change that out and then we'll turn the machine on again uh, and then we'll see if there's any changes in its operation uh, and then we'll then we'll focus on the front panel on the next part of the video all right so now that we've got those two capacitors changed out we've got some nice Audio grade Nishikons in there. Don't think it's going to make a damn bit of difference sound wise with everything else that's in this machine. But let's fire it up and helps to plug it in. Let's see what we got this time. And we've got some noise in the left channel. Hmm. Okay. That seems to go away as it warms up which would tend to suggest that capacitors are aging let's short out the input yeah definitely in the preamp whatever it is that could be dying caps in the preamp it's really easy to see when you need to recap something if you can hook it up to a scope because if the capacitors aren't properly charging or they're leaky the audio will be all over the place 
um, as this one stabilizes it does smooth out and that noise in the right channel seems to be completely gone let's see if we've got symmetrical clipping Yeah, it just starts to clip right there. So let's back that off a smidge. Nice clean power output. All right, so that's that. Uh, it really, at this point, we've gotten the set so that it works and it doesn't have the scary noise in the right channel and it seems to be fairly stable. Uh, we do have to work on the cosmetic portions of it, obviously the lamps out there. I would want to replace them all at the same time. Uh, the FM lamp is out. So I would want to take care of that too. Uh, but as far as, you can go crazy on one of these things. Uh, it is 40 something years old. And the the flutter when it first turns on is definitely capacitor related because now even at maximum sensitivity the audio looks pretty good a little bit of power supply bobble there but that's just to be expected so really I need to confer with the owner of this thing and see how far he wants to take it uh, the original estimate would have covered replacing the lamps behind the dial and the meter uh, but the other stuff like recapping is incredibly time-consuming and on this machine they're not very forgiving I'll show you here the board that I would be recapping and being attentive to is twofold you've got your uh, phono preamp here which is littered with these Panasonic capacitors that go bad and then you've got your main preamp here and your tone board and uh, these old gray Yelnas are starting to uh, get leaky with age I've noticed so this board would get repopulated with new high quality capacitors and also I don't know if you can see it in there let's see if I can zoom in a little bit those little round top uh, spaceship style looking transistors uh, get horribly leaky with age and they'll introduce all sorts of noise into this thing and it's like I said you could spend a lot of time on this and I don't know how far he wants to take this thing so uh, the next part of the video since I'm kind of running out of time today with all the stuff I've got going on will be dismantling the front panel and changing the lamps out uh, on this one, it's actually kind of better to go from front and back, depending on what you're changing. And I'll go into discussion about uh, how to do that correctly without breaking anything. But anyway, as of now, the set works. And it works correctly in both channels. But like I said, if we first turn it on here, before everything stabilizes, watch when the uh, preamp unmutes. Now, now it's not going to do it because it's not cold anymore, but we saw that flutter in the left channel that stabilized as it warmed up, which is indicative of old dying capacitors. So uh, <clears throat> if he's willing to ignore that, because after it warms up it seems fine, then we'll just do the lamps and stop. Uh, but if, there's, if he wants to go further on this, it's going to be considerable more time and money. So anyway, that's where we're at with the Sherwood. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. Uh, there will be a part three, and at the very least we'll do the lamps, but I'll see how far he wants to take this thing. And uh, more to come soon.